Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to manage a fire in a Weber kettle. All right, so to get started, we're gonna take our lid off and we'll remove our cooking grate. And in this video, we're gonna be focusing on fire management when using the snake method, as it's one of the most common setups for low and slow cooking, and it doesn't require any accessories. So what we're gonna do, we'll just set up a little snake. We're not gonna be cooking anything today as I really just wanna focus on the fire management. So grab some briquettes and we can start setting up a snake. No matter what briquettes I'm using, I'll always run a double stack down the bottom. If I'm using larger briquettes, I'll run two down the bottom and then just a single row through the middle. But because these ones are quite small, I'm gonna be running a double stack on top as well. So you just wanna stack them up like dominoes around the outside of your charcoal grate. We're not gonna make a very big snake today because we're not cooking anything. So we'll leave it at that length and then we'll start on our top stack. And you want to have them stacked up nice and even. You want them to all be touching so they're going to burn nice and even throughout your cook. All right, and the next thing I'm going to do is just get a couple of fire lighters going and we'll get eight to 12 briquettes going. So I've just got 10 briquettes here in our charcoal chimney and I'll place them straight over these fire lighters. All right, and now we'll come back once those briquettes are nice, red hot and ashed over, which should take about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, so it's been just over 10 minutes and as we can see here, them briquettes are ready to go. So what we're gonna do is pour them in at the start of our snake. Then we just wanna get some tongs and pile these briquettes all up over this unlit stuff. And now what I'm gonna do is completely open that bottom vent I'm gonna lay down a foil tray, then we'll put our cooking grate on. I'm gonna clip a grill probe on just over the top of that foil tray, and then we'll put our lid on, and we'll make sure that top vent is completely open as well. Now we can turn our thermometer on, and we're gonna to look to stabilize this off at around the 275 Fahrenheit or 135 Celsius range. So once we get up to that 225 Fahrenheit or 110-ish Celsius range, I'm gonna start closing down that bottom vent. So we'll come back once we've reached that stage. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes since we put our startup briquettes in there and we're just about at that 225 Fahrenheit or 110-ish Celsius range. Now, one question I get all the time is, does the snake method produce dirty smoke because we're using a bunch of unlit briquettes to fuel a long fire? And the answer to that question is no, not if it's set up and running properly. Now, the only time you should see dirty smoke is during that first 15 to 20 minutes after you've put your startup briquettes in. After that, all your unlit briquettes should be preheated to a hot enough temperature that they will catch light and burn cleanly throughout the cook. Apart from that, the only other time you would see dirty smoke is if you're smothering your fire or if your fire doesn't have enough oxygen. So we're pretty much ready to start shutting that bottom vent down to start stabilizing this temperature off. So let's do it. All right, so as you can see, we're pretty much at that temperature we wanna be at. And I'm gonna shut our bottom vent down so it's about halfway open. So now we've half closed that bottom vent, I'm just gonna give our Weber 10 to 15 minutes just to find itself and see where it ends up at. Now, all of this setup is gonna change slightly depending on how hot it is outside, how windy it is, what type of briquettes you're using and much more. I've been watching this temperature climb relatively slow so that's why I've chosen to just shut our bottom vent down by half. If it was climbing quite quickly, I would shut it down to almost closed. So like I said, each setup is gonna be slightly different based on the conditions you're working with. But for now, we'll let our Weber sort itself out and we'll come back once we're sitting nice and stable to see what we need to do next. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes and we are still climbing quite slowly. So what I'm gonna do now is shut our bottom vent down just a little bit more so it's only just open. So normally it's around this time I'll put in my smoking wood and whatever I've decided to cook. For example, that might be a brisket, some beef ribs, pork ribs, a pork butt. Whatever you've chosen to cook is gonna absorb a lot of heat once it goes into that Weber. So you will need to make running adjustments to that bottom vent based on what your temperatures are doing. Like I said earlier, there's no magic setup. You will need to make different adjustments based on the conditions you're working with. But we're obviously not cooking anything today. So what we're gonna do is give this Weber five minutes. We'll see what these temperatures are doing. If our temperature starts to drop, we're gonna open that bottom vent up a little bit. That's pretty straightforward and easy, but if your temperatures start getting away from you, it can be challenging to bring them back down, especially if you've already shut that bottom vent down all you can. You don't wanna completely shut that vent, otherwise it's gonna kill all the oxygen coming in through that vent and you're potentially gonna smother that fire, which will cause dirty smoke. So we'll give our Weber five minutes, then we'll come back. 
All right, so it's been five minutes and our temperature has actually dropped. So we know what to do to fix that. It's pretty straightforward. We just need to open that vent up a little bit to bring our temperature back up. So I would normally just open it up a touch like so, give it five minutes to see where it stabilizes off and then make further adjustments from there. That's pretty straightforward, but now I wanna create a scenario where our temperatures have gotten away from us and then I'll show you what we need to do to bring them back down. So we've just opened that bottom vent right up. That's gonna let a bunch of oxygen in, which will fire up those briquettes and bring our temperature up. So that's only been a few seconds since we've made that adjustment. And as you can see, our temperature has started to climb already. So what we'll do is we'll let that shoot over that 275 Fahrenheit or 135 Celsius range. Then I'll show you what we can do to bring it back down. All right, so it's only been five minutes. As you can see, that temperature has jumped quite high and it's still climbing quite quickly. Now, what we can obviously do from here, is to shut that vent back down to almost closed. But most of the time it's too late to shut that bottom vent down to almost closed to bring your temperature back down. You always wanna try that first, but I can already see our temperatures continuing to climb even with that adjustment. So now I'll show you a few other things you can do to help stabilize or bring down your temperature. All right, so one thing we can do is we can make little adjustments to our lid vent. You don't wanna make big adjustments to your lid vent. If you almost close that, you run the risk of killing your fire, which will cause dirty smoke. But if you've done that and your temperatures are still getting away from you, what we can do next is we'll take our lid off. And as you can see, our little snake has been burning beautifully. But our next option is to get some boiling water in that foil tray down below. Then we'll get our lid back on because we don't want to let too much oxygen in there, which will fire up our briquettes even more. And now by having that water pan in there, that's going to help absorb a lot of heat. It's going to help bring our temperature down to a point where we can go back to using our vent adjustments to control our temperature and stabilize it off. But if you've done all of those things to help manage your fire and your temperatures are still getting away from you, I'll show you one last thing you can do to help manage your fire and bring your temperature down. So before I show you this last little tip, as you can see, we're sitting nice and stable now. That water pan has really helped. But for this next part, I've got some high heat gloves on. We're going to take our lid off, then we'll remove our cooking grate. And I'll only ever do this as a last resort. But now what we're going to do to bring our temperature down is we're going to remove some of these red hot briquettes. Then we'll get our cooking grate back on and our lid. So by taking some of that heat source out of your Weber, that's a guaranteed way to bring your temperature down. But again, you want to be very careful when doing that, not to take too many briquettes out. Otherwise you'll run the risk of killing your fire. So I hope those fire management tips and tricks really help you. It's a question I get asked a lot. I've been asked to make this video a bunch of times. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please consider it as it will notify you when we upload new videos. We upload two videos every week and subscribing is a great way to support us. But for now, that's the end of this video. So if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments below and we'll see you next time.